Wedding Talk Radio, and I have a very special guest, actually a friend of mine, uh, who's going to be out at the photo booth and the Mobile Beat Conference coming up in a couple of weeks. Uh, this is Fred Jacob. He is with the Pink Bride, and also the developer, I guess, um, uh, the visionary behind Scan to Scan, and also more well known Bride Scan, which I do use personally at my bridal shows, and I know several people do as well. So uh, we'll get started right now. So welcome, Fred. Thanks for joining Hey, us. thank you, Kyle. Looking forward to sharing some information today. And I know you're way out in California and I'm way over here in Tennessee. That's okay. We'll meet in the middle. There you go. <laughs> so Bride Scan, Scan to Scan. Now, Scan to Scan is the consumer end, I guess, or the, the end for people who are not in the wedding industry necessarily, or they're not producing a bridal show. Bride Scan is specifically geared towards brides and bridal show producers and scan to scan is kind of everything else. Is that right? It is. And so maybe kind of start from the beginning. Um, so I've been doing bridal shows uh, for gosh, over 20 years, done over 400 of them myself. And I saw three or four years ago, the need um, to have the brides be able to connect in an easier way. So the pink bride in Tennessee, Alabama, and Missouri, um, 14 bridal shows a year. Uh, we just love the brides. We say yes to love, so to speak. So four years ago, I said, how can I help the brides connect? And that's when I created BrideScan uh, as an app that they would download. And then when they would come to the show, um, and by the way, for those that want to later on, they can click on the a video there. Uh, and it's a really cute video that shows a bride going through the show. Um, so bottom line is, uh, I created the app called BrideScan. They download the app. Um, and, and at the end of the show, they have all the people they've shared information with um, and all the people they, they've wanted to share information with by scanning uh, their QR code, which is really cool. Once they scan the QR code, they can even make electronic notes about what, who they just scanned about something they want to remember. And again, now this is all on the phone. Everyone's got a cell phone, of course. It doesn't have to have a bag of stuff. You're not picking up lots of papers. But when you do this with that, with that exhibitor at the show, you're swapping the information at the same time. Um, and BrideScan has many features as you're showing here, budgeting and different features that you can use. And BrideScan is free to the brides, totally free to the brides. Again, it's our way of trying to help the brides uh, connect. Um, and you simply uh, can create your free account, uh, you get to use it, and it saves the information. So BrideScan was created just to help electronically connect brides and uh, exhibitors at the show. So after I did BrideScan, then I realized this could apply to other events. So that's when I created scan to scan So scan to scan is, as you've said, for all other types of events, car shows, boat shows, home shows, parade of home shows, any type of event, same opportunity. Attendees get to use it free. The exhibitors get to capture and swap the information. The show producer gets to add a, uh, an electronic feature to the show that would cost him a lot of money to create on his own, and he gets to use it through me as a service. So I'm looking for show producers of any kind that would like to use uh, scan to scan um, And because scan to scan became so popular, I added uh, digital ticketing. So now you can actually purchase your tickets to come to the event through scan to scan Like at the uh, photo booth convention, um, if you go to photo booth uh, expo.com, which is where we're going to be here in a couple weeks. Uh, there's a place uh, once it loads over here where it says register now. And if you click that register now button, it's going to take you to the scan to scan site where then you can then purchase your tickets. But before you purchase your tickets, it gives you the options of what, what the tickets are, how much the tickets cost. So it's like a ticket landing page. And then once you go through this and you decide what kind of ticket you want, then you go and you push the buy ticket button. Then once you push the buy ticket button, now you have the option to choose the tickets. And then very conveniently, after you choose the tickets you want, you of course uh, use your credit card and immediately then you are uh, signed up to be at the show and you get an email. And the email then verifies your purchase, puts a QR code in that email, and you simply then show that QR code when you come to Las Vegas in a couple of weeks and you're immediately checked in. But the beauty of this is once you come to the event and you're checked in and you go into the exhibit hall, 
Now, all the exhibitors are gonna to want to share information with you. So how do you do it? You're gonna show them your badge, which has your QR code on it. They're gonna scan that with their cell phone and you're gonna swap the information. So it's, it's really become a very uh, interesting situation that as far as I know, there aren't too many other people out there that offer the two-way exchange. I don't know of anybody who offers it, to be honest with you. Um, so what we're going to do now, and it's pretty cool because I've been using the bride scan for several years now, very successfully. It's very convenient. The one thing that I like about it, just kind of getting off on a little side note here about bride scan is when we did it the old school way and the brides filled out on a registration form and they hand wrote their email address in there, their phone number in there, all their information, A, sometimes things were missing, B, and more importantly, is that an O? or is that a zero? Is that a one or is that an I or an L? You know, it's hard to decipher handwriting sometimes. And so this made it really easy because they would type it in the correct way and there would be an O and we'd know it's an O. And so they would get their emails that they're expecting from us and we would have the correct information. So that was, I think, one of the biggest things for me that was a positive. It saved all that work. And then on top of that, the ability to now send an email to all of those brides was just huge. But anyways, like I said, I'm getting off on a side note here. What I want to do right now is go through setting up an exhibitor because I'm going to be at Photo Booth Expo as well with Wedding Talk Radio, go figure. Um, and I want to go through setting up an account. So I got my email. I'm going to go back to our uh, uh, screen here and share my screen with you. And then you can, we can kind of walk through this together. So, so Kyle, the, some of the confusion sometimes is that exhibitors try to set up an account and they don't need to set up an account um, because right. if you're an exhibitor, I uh, create the account for you. If you're an attendee, Correct. well, then you, you set up your account. But as an exhibitor, I send you an email and start that account for you. Correct. And, and, and then, of course, with your account, there has to be a... Uh, a password associated with your email. So we have to send you an email that says, here's your, here's your link that you can now set up your password. So this is, it's called a forgot password, but in some cases it's, it's setting up the password for the first exactly. time. So creating your password allows you then to have your account private to you. Now, some have asked though, if I'm an exhibitor at the show and I have people helping me, do I have to have a different account and different password for each of my three uh, reps? No, you can all three sign in at the same time uh, and all three scan. Uh, uh, attendees at the same time, and that will all go into one list. But another feature, Kyle, that some exhibitors would like to use, don't know about, I'd love to share with them, is that you could actually set up a separate account for each of those three reps. So really? as they are scanning the attendees, they're creating their own individual database. You know, so so this way, uh, if Fred is there and Kyle is there and Tom is there, we can all scan together as a group or uh, scan to scan can create a separate one from each of us. And as you scan, you're then creating your own special list. Nice. OK, that's I like that a lot. So I'm going through the setup process and by setup, what I guess meant was not create an account, because like you said, you create that or the producer creates that. Yes. For you. Yes. But on us, on our end, we still have to give them information because right now, if, if somebody were to scan my QR code at uh, the photo booth or the mobile beat conference, all they're going to get is Bridal Association of America, email and phone number, and they're not going to get anything else. So they know nothing about me. And so it's my job as the exhibitor now to go in and add more detailed information. So Could I? Yeah, could I share the screen and show you someone? Um, so let me let me punch on share screen. Yep, go ahead. And I'm going to um, jump over here. Let's see. Um, and let's see. Okay, I'm going to go to the Pink Bride, and I'm going to just show you a sample of someone uh, who who has taken real advantage uh, of. Um, of the BrideScan profile. Okay. And we actually have started listing the BrideScan profiles right on the BrideScan show page oh, by their wow, category. Wow. Yeah. And the one I'm going to show you is a videographer. 
and his name is Jake Schick Productions in Knoxville, Tennessee. Okay. So here is Jake Schick's profile that he's created in BrightScan. You could do the same in scan to scan Here's his description. Here's his link to his website, but he didn't really want you to go to his website. He wanted you to watch some videos. So he embedded the videos right there so you can watch them. Then he's put his special offer incentive of whatever that might be. Now he has where you can contact him. And then he puts some still photos. And he did all this like in five or 10 minutes and now his BrightScan profile is so much more impactful than just his name, uh, his email, and his phone number. Wow. Isn't that that's, cool? That's really cool. And that's some of the things, like I said, I want to kind of go through real quick and show people live. This is what we're actually doing. We're setting this up so you can see that. Um, so let's jump back over here. And Kyle, you can answer, you can answer this question. When you call Fred Jacob in Tennessee, does he answer his phone? Yeah, I don't know of a time that you haven't answered your phone. Okay. Uh, is amazing. I mean, so I, I am helping anyone that wants to call me. Yeah. yeah. And, and what's, what's the number that they need to call if they want to get a hold of you? Sure. It's my cell number 865 310 6875. Some people like to text and they can text me, 865-310-6875. So they can text me or they can call me. If I don't answer the phone right away, um, I will get back to you as quickly as I can. But, but keep in mind, of course, with the, with the two conventions that are coming up, um, I'm trying to help all the exhibitors. And then also something that's unique to the photo booth um, and the Mobile Entertainment Expo is that in the beginning, people were allowed to buy their tickets kind of as a group of three or four or five tickets under one name. Right. But, but now you need to separate that out and you need to come and have your, uh, your three or four or five tickets transferred to the individual people who are coming. Because if you don't, and you get to the registration table and you bought five tickets under Fred Jacob's name, well, then you're going to get a badge times five that says Fred Jacob and his right. QR code. So in order to make this easier, when you have purchased your tickets, there's a transfer button underneath the tickets that you have. And all you have to do is hit the transfer button. And from there, you can then transfer your second, third, and fourth ticket to someone else. If you do that before you get to Vegas, it's going to make it a whole lot easier. Perfect. Awesome. So I see. So Kyle, you're having fun with this. Uh, by the way, Kyle, under the description, that's where these other opportunities, um, when you hit the description, uh, the pencil there, uh, it brings up what they call rich text. And you can okay. see normal, A, bold. Uh, yeah. You see all these options. Um, and those are the things how you can center, highlight, make bigger. Um, and, and then that last one, uh, next to the last one was that kind of funky signal, kind of a, an eight figure. And that's where you can, of course, link things. Right. Okay, so like if so, I want to embed like like you like he did, I want to embed my video. I'm gonna to go to YouTube real quick here. Yeah. Grab the video from uh, the one I did with Rob. Yep. Um, and we'll grab that, and I'll go back to scan to scan my profile. Yep. Embed the video. So type the uh, paste the video. Okay. Now uh, now highlight it. Okay. And now go over to the eight. I call it the crazy eight there. Yep. Save it. Okay. Now close it. Okay. Oh. Okay. Now, um, now it's embedded. There it is. Now, will that show up like you did on, on the other gentleman's as a video or as a link? That one, that one's going to show up as a link uh, to embed it. You don't, you don't do the symbol eight thing. You leave it by itself. Okay. So uh, if I copy this iframe here uh from uh from youtube right and go back in here and edit and then take that out because we don't want that per se we want this you know what and th this will be a test we'll see but i think if you just left the youtube but didn't um didn't hit the uh, link i think that would have worked too okay so i did that and that didn't seem to no so i i think what you do is is leave the youtube that you originally had so get rid of the uh, frame that you just did. Okay. Um, and now just leave that and save it. Nope. No, is it that no. there? 
Now, now, would we see it here as a video or only no. when they scan it? I think, yeah, I think save it. Now make it, yeah, save it, go to the bottom. I'll save it, save it, yes. Save thanks. it, save it, right, okay. right. Now I think if you were to go uh, view your page. Okay, so I go that where, over here? At, at the bottom where next to edit, say view page. Got it. And see, now you have to sign back in to be able to see it. But I think what you just did would uh, would make it an embed video. We'll find out in just a moment here. Uh, but we changed your email, right? Oh, that's right. Yes. <laughs> so the email is important. The email is kind of your social security number. And, um, and, and so people, they say, you know, well, um, I, I sent the reset password, but I didn't get it. It has to be the one that we have for you. And you'd be amazed how many people, people have changed their emails and forgot. Yeah. They forgot they had changed their email. So, uh, so bottom line, it's important to make sure that you use the email that's connected uh, with your scan to scan account. Okay. There's the, it, that's a photo that I put on there. Oh, I love that. You like that? Yeah. Good looking guy, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I am. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, okay, so it, I, it's just, it's not even a link right now. It's just text. Yes. So I think, and I'm just guessing, and this is what I like about the fact of what we're doing here right now, where this is live, this is real, this is exactly yes. what people go through. So we get to see that together. Yes. Uh, try, uh, no, not that, obviously. Let's go back here. Let's try the embed. Um, I think that that's what we need to do. Close, save, and let's go back over here and refresh. Nope. You know, you know what I could do? Uh, we could uh, um, go back to um, looking at um, the, uh, the person. I could go back and impersonate him and look at his background, uh, what he did to make it work that nope. way. I wonder if no, that's heading stuff. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I will. So let me save this while we're doing that and I'll add a few more things. Sure. Uh, so like, for instance, one of the things that I'm doing at photo booth is, and actually let me add some information here. Let's edit my profile. Let's complete the easy stuff. Uh, give out my cell phone. Cause that's okay. I don't mind doing that. Our okay. address. Oh, spell better. So let's save that. Now let's go back down here. One of the other things that's really nice is the fact that you can add an after show email. So we're going to add one of those real quick, like, and I'll edit and update this, uh, you know, a, a little bit later as far as getting really detailed, but sure. add that, no. save. So, so Kyle, ahead. I did jump on another computer yep. and I went in and looked at uh, Jake Schick's description that we yep. saw earlier. And, and all he did was put in the HTTPS YouTube um, uh, and that was it. As a as link copy. or or as a, just as a as just copy, just script. He just put it in his script. He didn't have to link it. So let me copy that again. Now it is underlined, and I'm not sure how he got it um, underlined. So it's not highlighted or anything. No, because I can nope. underline it, but that's not going to. I don't. That's, I'll, have to, I'll have to find that out and figure that out. And well, well wait a minute. There it is. It well, I, like, I did that. On, I did that on purpose. I just, I just put an underline on it. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's exactly. Oh, look at that. There's the video. Ah. So all you yeah. had to do was underline it. Well, I, I don't know. I, I did throw an underline on there. I don't know. I'm, I'm just curious. I'm going to take the underline off because okay. I just the underline like this. I didn't. It's not anything special so let me just save that real quick sure save go back refresh and still there so no the underlined i, I don't know why it was underlined gotcha it, gotcha it like it was necessary so all you have to do for it to be embedded is not to link it just to right. display it
You, some people have asked me about the after show message and my purpose in that, you know, the, it goes out the day after an event is over. And some people say, well, why can't I do it myself? And I say, well, most exhibitors don't go home the day after an event saying to themselves, I've got to go email all those people who stop by my booth. Right. right? It's not the first thought of your mind because you're probably backed up with stuff from the show you've got to take care of. So this was my way of making it quick and easy for you to have a contact with everyone that scans you at your booth. And just as you're saying, the after show email should not be, thank you for stopping by my booth. Call me if I can help you, right? right. No, you got to engage them. You got to give them like you're doing some reason uh, to, uh, to react to you. So like, and this one is what they see when they scan you, the special offer incentive. They, yeah. they see it, they see it immediately, but as also part of my program, um, this is the producer's option. Um, they can actually see the special offer incentives emailed to them two days before the show starts. So in my case, using BrightScan in Knoxville, Tennessee, a couple of weeks ago, three of my 100 exhibitors told me that before the show started, they already had bookings as a result of that email. Wow. So it seems pretty straightforward. I'm going to refresh this page now. When the bride scans us on their, or the bride, sorry, the uh, attendee, because we're talking about photo booth and mobile beat and stuff like that. Yes. When they scan our QR code, and let me see if I can do this. It's going to be kind of, kind of fun here. I'm going to go ahead and let's see, let's go back to the scan to scan. If you click on QR code, this is my QR code. Basically. Yes. Yes. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen. And now we're going to do this via camera for lack of, you know. So I'm going to open up my camera app in my phone. Got that there. Scan that QR, click on it, and this is what's happening. I don't know if I can show that. It wants me to log in or register to view. Now, yes. this, obviously, I'm going to log in with, it, with my Facebook. A, it's simple. B, I want to see what it's like from the uh, attendees standpoint. Right. Now, don't, don't use your email. Your Google right. is not the email address. We don't want to use the same one. Right, right, right. right. Otherwise, it's like, wait a minute, what? that doesn't that we don't recognize that person. Right, right. So, so like, if I were to go share, uh, share my screen here. Let me share my yeah, screen. Go ahead. And let me go to uh, share. Uh, let me go back here, and uh, let me go to. Um, let's see. Let me share. Um, sign in to. Uh, Gosh, come on there. Let's see. Two. And hold on one second. Two. Scan.com. All right. And I'm going to uh, look up myself where I've created a fake bride account. Okay, there I am. And as you know, in our world, we call the bride scans faves. So here's a collection of scans that Fred the fake bride has done at different shows he's been at around the country. And note that in the case of bridal shows, it, ca it categorizes them by their category. So this is beverage bartending. This is, the, right. uh, this is a mobile bar that was set up at a show. And there's their information and there's their contact. There's their special offer. Um, here's a sugar mama shimmer two two girls that have a special type of a confetti for the drink, um, a bridal registry. Here's a bridal shop. Notice how these pictures really, I think are beneficial to the bride to remember. Now here's one without anyone in it, cake buds, but look at this one. Here's Embry house with a mother daughter team. I don't know. I just kind of feel more of a warm and fuzzy here with, uh, right. so I think, I think, uh, having these pictures uh, are really important. So again, I, I'm, I'm just excited how this displays. Now notice as a bride, I have this little button over here, a trash can. I can hit that trash can if I've decided I'm not interested in the flower shop. And when I do, they go away. And at the same time, the exhibitor is notified not to contact me anymore. 
So the trash can is a way that we transparently share with both. Uh, sometimes the exhibitor says, well, I feel like I got stabbed in the heart if someone trashes me, so to speak. Well, no, wouldn't you rather know they're not interested and you stop trying to pursue them? So that's the, that's the option for the brides uh, when they register. But look, look, isn't this so cool? They get to look at all this. That's great. And, and these accounts are uh, basically, uh, we don't take them down. Uh, now, some of the people as producers are concerned about confidentiality. And Kyle, as you know, working with me, I don't share your vendors. I don't share your leads. I'm not selling it to some other nation, you know, national company. It's right. totally your information. And that should be of interest to uh, any producer who has some third party accessing all their information. What do they do with your information? Well, I do absolutely nothing with it. It's totally, it's totally uh, for you to use. And then finally, if someone's coming to an event uh, and you've had an exhibitor in several of your shows, uh, each time they come, it's a new event and the scans are there represented by the event. So they still have all the scans from before and they can just simply check on the one that they'd like to pull up and it will only then show them the scans from that particular event. And then one final thing, Kyle, you showed your QR code. I'm going to stop my share now. Yep. You 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 uh you showed your QR code. Your QR code. This just happened at an event. They, by mistake or not, printed their QR code on something they printed out, passed out, on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of the following week. They were getting scanned, and as soon as they got scanned, it was being added to their scan list. Wow. So we now are looking at making your QR code basically an annual code that you keep forever. You can put on your cards, you can put on the side of your car. And if someone scans it and it's outside the hours of your event, you automatically get an email that Fred Jacob just scanned you. Isn't that cool? That, that's amazing. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Well, so, I, yes, go ahead, Kyle. I was going to say, um, because scan to scan is different than bride scan. I mean, it's the same, but different product. Yes. Um, I'm actually creating a an, a, an attendee account on bride scan. I mean, on scan to scan. Yes. And obviously I can't log in with it because it doesn't exist. So let's do well, that real quick. Sure. And by the way, something that's also happened at some of the larger shows is exhibitors can scan other exhibitors. Right. Okay. So that, what that means is, when you look at your list, it says B in front of your list standing for bride. But if you scan a vendor, it's a V in front of that name standing for vendor. Oh, wow. And Kyle, you don't know this, but guess what I just added last week? What? Um, at my bridal show for the first time, I had T-Mobile. Wow. What? Yeah, T-Mobile. Um, I had never even thought of calling them before. Well, when I told them my price, they went like, are you kidding me? I buy a flea market for three days for that price. And your, your show's four hours. And I go, <laughs> I go, yeah, we're special. So right. they, ended up, they, ended up, they ended up buying the booth. The day after they called me and they said, when's your next show? And I said, well, it's coming up. We want two booths for the next show. I said, why? They said, we had more activations than ever before in a show. But where I was going with this is, Kyle, we've created a third type of account. We've created a guest account. So all the okay. people coming with a bride who want to can sign up to use BrideScan as a guest. And if the cool sculpting or the weight loss or the realtor or any of the things that they're there that they're seeing for the bride or of interest to them, they can scan them as a guest. Okay. Now, now the exhibitors are going to get vendors, uh, vendor, other vendors, brides and guests on their list. Wow. That's pretty cool. All right, so I created my account. Let's see what happens here now. Uh, so we go back, scan the QR code, click on it, and it wants me to log in. So, yeah, the first time you log in, or yes, it it, it wants to know who you are. Make make sure, verify. Yeah, well, you know, oh wow, you mean you actually have security on here? <laughs> yes, we do. Got to got to got to make sure that you're a real person and not a robot. Which yes. Is Nowadays, it's not necessarily a bad thing. No I'm kidding. Um, but uh, so we'll go through and do that in a moment. But suffice to say, is all the information that I put into my scan to scan account is what the people who attend the event are going to see. 
Then and Kyle, it's uh, it's Thursday night. You're home from the event, and um, you can change your information. And yeah. anyone who gets home who opens your scan up again, they're going to see your new information. So let's say you had a special offer at the show that you want to change now after the show. Well, so you change it on Thursday night. They go to open it, and now it's the new offer. Wow. Yeah, it's real time. We can make this happen. Awesome. Well, I think we got tons of information. I think we've answered most questions, and I'm sure there's always a unique question here or there that somebody goes, oh, what about this? You know, in fact, I actually have one. Let me, let me try something here. I'm curious about another option. So obviously I do a, a podcast and I would like for people to be able to um, click on a link and go directly to, let's say iTunes as an example. So are, uh, are we able to add a, a picture in the description, that's the first question. You can add a, uh, uh, a, a graphic or a picture, um, yes. Um, but where you were going with that, I was thinking was in your description, do you wanna add a link to your iTunes, right? So I have an idea, I'm gonna try something here. Okay. On my screen, cause I just, I know it's like right here, you don't have a image per se, you know, where you no. can put an image. Yeah. But what I did do, and I've done this in the past with other things, go back to my website. I highlighted these four, YouTube, Google Play, iTunes, and iHeartRadio. Okay. Copied it. And if I go back here and I <laughs> paste it, it puts them right in there. And they are links. So I am able to put images in here in the description. Um, uh, I didn't know Google will accept that, or I'm not sure how that turns out in the uh, transfer in an email or in a link, but right. But you know, I mean, there's always a hack here or there, right? Oh um, my, I don't know. No, you it's, there's, uh, there's lots of ways to skin the cat. So so there you go. See now this is on a computer, of course, but uh, let's click on, I don't know, iHeartRadio. So yep. takes you right to my iHeartRadio. Uh, That's podcast. amazing. Yeah. Uh, we just learned something new. We I sure did. Play, whatever it is. If you already have it on a website or somewhere, you can copy it and paste it right in there with the logo or the image or whatever. So you just kind of kind of create the HTML and paste it. And I just did all that without sharing my screen, didn't I? <laughs> we loved it. your conversation. Yeah. So let's do this one more time because I think it's important. And I'll do this without, uh, I'm going to take it out first. So that's not there. And close and refresh. Okay, now let me share my screen. Okay, so I was telling you, like they say in, in good conversation, tell them what you're going to tell them, then show them what you're going to tell them. So that's what I was doing. Yes. I didn't, I didn't make a mistake. That was on purpose. Anyways, <laughs> click on description. Now you got this here. Again, there's nowhere to put an image in. No. Technically. But if you go to your website, and we'll go to mine, and I highlight, okay, I'm just highlighting that, and I copy it, control C on a on a PC or command C on a, on a Mac, mm -hmm. go back We go right there. Well, go where we want it to go right there and control or command V. And there it is with the real. Okay. So, and again, whatever you want to do, you can highlight them. And now we're going to go and center that on the screen, you know, make it look pretty, you know, close, save and go back to our profile. And there it is. Yeah. Unreal. So see, we just learned a new hack. Wow. That is so cool. <laughs> Something that we didn't know. Um, and of course, there's one of the videos right there. That's Rob uh, from the conference itself. Yes. All right. Well, I think we've taken up a lot of time here for uh, um, our viewers. And hopefully they learned something new. They got. Thank you so ideas. much. And Thank you so much. They're able to. Uh, really take advantage of this. One of the other beauties is as, an, as a vendor, or not a vendor, sorry, as an attendee, I can make notes. Oh, I just bought this from them, or they offered me this special price, or yes. And so you're making notes that only you can see. Right. You know, I loved his attitude, or I didn't like his attitude, or whatever it might That's be. That's right. Yes. So um, if I call, make sure I ask for so-and-so because he was really friendly. So you can make notes. Um, so it's a good thing. 
Kyle, was, thank you right. so much. It's, oh, you're it's, welcome. It's been great. You have a great weekend, and I look forward to seeing you in Vegas soon. Yes, I'll see you at the Photo Booth and the Mobile Entertainment Expo. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Thanks.